Today we're gonna to be talking about some general routines and mindset shifts that you can adopt that's just gonna make decluttering in your home a lot easier. By just these little things that we do every day or even just the way that we think about the things that we do. Let's do this. Okay, number one is definitely a mindset shift that I think is really important when it comes to viewing our stuff, and that is the idea that done is better than perfect. Taking your clothes and putting them into the dresser, even if they're unfolded, even if they're not fully organized, is still better than leaving them out on the chair where they're gonna sit for a few days and they get mixed in with dirty clothes and now you're not gonna know what's dirty and what's clean. Doing something 50% is better than doing it 0%. And I think naturally as people, we like to see things completed, like we like to see the final piece of it, like it feels really good in our brain. Usually the completion of a task gives us a release a dopamine and so sometimes when we look at something we're like I don't have time to do that I don't have time to fold those clothes and organize them and put them into the dresser we stop and so we don't complete the task but reminding yourself that doing it 50% of the way is still better than doing it 0% right you walk into your kitchen it's been a really long day like there's stuff everywhere and your kids spilled milk on the floor and there's stuff out on the table and you are working there and your computer stuff's out and you look at it and you're just like I don't have time to handle this right now. Even taking five minutes to just like throw away the trash really quick and put the dishes into the sink, even if you don't have time to actually wash the dishes, is still better than doing nothing. You're left with a space that's a little bit better than it was before. So I'm constantly always reminding myself like when I see something I'm like, I do not have time to do this right now, that taking even the tiniest bit of time to do it a little bit is still better than not doing anything at all. All right, my next habit, kind of going off this next one, is the idea of tackling one small thing every single day. Um, I think one of the biggest misconceptions that a lot of us have when it comes to organization and our stuff is that we can organize the space one time and then that's kind of it. And when it falls disorganized and things like, you know, the organization system falls apart a little bit or just gets really messy, we assume that it's because we failed at this organizational structure. We are messy, we're, we can't keep up with it, like we're just not organized, we're overwhelmed. But the truth is all organizations organization structures require maintenance, right? You need to be going in there and like actively decluttering sometimes and putting things back where they go. So that's why I like to adopt the idea of just like tackling one little thing every day. I usually keep kind of like a running list of the things that I've noticed are getting disorganized and just grab one of them every day. This is not taking our whole Saturday. This is saying, okay, I'm gonna do the top drawer of my secretary desk today. And then tomorrow maybe I'll do the middle drawer. It's almost like these little like micro tasks. It's like making it so small that you can't not do it, but you're doing just a little something every day and remembering that because these areas got disorganized it doesn't mean you're disorganized, it just means they need to be maintained. And by taking a little bit of time, five to 10 minutes every day to pick one of these spots, you are an organized person because you are maintaining the space. My next habit is to get into the habit of doing clutter sweeps, especially as you're doing these little like micro tasks or just in your general day-to-day -day life. I think a lot of us fall into this habit of organizing our clutter. You can't organize clutter, right? That's the whole, that's why clutter is what it is. It can't be organized. Say we're organizing a junk drawer or putting the things that make sense where they go. Um, and then we end up with like this little pile that's left over, right? This is the clutter. It doesn't really belong anywhere else. We don't necessarily need it. We think that maybe we might need it at some point. So we don't want to get rid of it, but it doesn't really have a home. It doesn't really have a purpose. If you find that you have some pile or you have some little collection of thing that just keeps moving from place to place. It's never really getting used. The truth is, the answer is it's probably clutter. And you need to maybe think about if this is actually even something that you need in your house at all. And I have whole videos and I will link some in the description box down below that will help you work through some of these clutter things if you have a hard time letting go. Um, but just remind yourself like you can't organize clutter and so you should be actively kind of sweeping out the clutter as you go. My next routine is one that I adopted maybe a year or so ago that I really love and that is picking one time a week when you can find 30 to 60 minutes to kind of do like a deeper reset of your home. If you have watched any of my videos for a long period of time, you know I love to talk about just like these little tasks, right? We're doing five minutes here, 10 minutes here, set a five minute alarm and, and tackle over here because that's what generally tends to work for most of us in our day-to-day -day life. You know, if you're working, if you're working and a parent, if you're just a stay-at-home mom, there's not a high likelihood that you have like big pockets of time throughout your day where you can get things done. And if you do, they're probably at the end of the day when you are exhausted. And all these little tiny things, these little routines that you're doing every day, 
really help the organization and the tidiness of your home. But I still find that once a week, if I can find a 30 to 60 minute pocket of time to do kind of a reset, it really helps. Because I will be working and maintaining my home like every night, every day as I'm walking through it, but things will still pile up, things that I just didn't have time to. Like I said, maybe those things that I got to 50% and I couldn't get them all the way to 100%. For me, it's usually every Monday because like my kids have been home, it tends to be a little bit messier and crazier after weekend, and so usually I just like wanna jump right into work, but I take like an hour block right then when my kids first go to school. That's when I do like a big home reset. Previously when my kids were home full time, I would do it like during nap. I would pick one day a week that during nap I would take a 30 or 60 minute chunk of time to just kinda reset my space. And I find that you really do need to like, it needs to be like a specific day and needs to be repeating because then it just becomes something that happens. You're like, it's Monday, Monday during nap time, this is what I do. I do my reset and personally when I do it, I like to add a little incentive to it and so I will listen to an audiobook while I do it. Because I love listening to audiobooks but I don't always necessarily have time to do it so it becomes this kind of win-win where I'm getting work done in the home but I also get like a little me time to listen to audiobooks. And Audible is cool enough to sponsor today's video. Audible is pretty much my go-to when I'm listening to audiobooks. It makes it really easy to listen anytime, anywhere. Whether I'm working out, I'm taking a walk, I'm decluttering, cleaning and tidying or just like driving to pick up my kids at school. School. They offer a huge selection of audiobooks across basically every genre. It makes me feel good to be productive and get this like home reset done, but it also gives me a chance to catch up on the audiobooks and the podcasts that I want to listen to. If you don't already have Audible, new members can try it totally for free. I will have a link in the description box down below, or you can also text this code to 500-500 to get a free trial as well. Okay, next routine um, is one that I feel like some people might not agree with, but it really works well for me, and that is to keep appliances put away. Besides my coffee machine, which lives in our appliance garage, the only appliance we keep out on our counter is our toaster oven. All other appliances live put away. This is our air fryer, our blender, my stand mixer, all of this sort of stuff. Even though some of these things I use literally almost every single day, I just find that the five seconds it takes to take it and put it away and the space that it clears up on my counter just helps me keep my kitchen so much cleaner. And I talk about this a lot in videos that I've shared about simplifying your kitchen. I find kitchens one of the hardest places to keep simplified because they are so like well used, just like the most used room in the entire home. That I feel like I do really hyper focus on keeping that area simplified and decluttered and taking appliances and putting them away makes such a difference to the visual clutter and thus makes a big difference to how you just keep that space organized. This also applies to appliances as far as laptops and chargers. When I'm not using my laptop, I slip it away. I usually do not leave it out on the counter. Literally always like closing my laptop and putting it in my bag. Even if 20 minutes later I'm taking it out again to check my email really quick because it's just not cluttering up the space. When I'm not using my computer charger, I put it away as well. And I find that it makes such a difference to not have the chargers sitting out all the time. It's crazy how much of a difference it makes to not just have these chargers and wires hanging out all the time. And it literally takes five seconds, 10 seconds to take a charger and put it away and then take it back out when you need it again. My next habit is one that I adopted probably about a year ago and I've been so good with sticking with it because I used to be so bad about this and that is emptying my car when I get home. I feel like this became a necessity when I started having kids in school and they were going and coming from school with stuff every single day but I was the worst offender of like leaving stuff in my car because I was like that's a problem for tomorrow Callie and then tomorrow Callie was like oh man where is my backpack? Where is my coffee? mug where is my stuff like where where is everything it's in the car it's basically the equivalent of like I'll get gas tomorrow and then tomorrow you is already running late and now you got to get gas it's like a whirlwind honestly the first 10 minutes when I get home with my children because I'm coming inside with two children as well as lunch boxes water bottles shoes my coffee my backpack but it is so worth it to have this kind of like whirlwind of 10 minutes and get everything out of the car because now the car is not cluttered and everything is inside I can easily see what needs to get put away what needs to be tended to that night and it is so nice in the morning to go into your car and not have a bunch of 
stuff that you left lying around in your car still there. Okay, next up is not to overfill your closets. I feel like lots of times, especially when we're decluttering and we're organizing, we have this idea that we need to fill the space that we have. But whenever I'm organizing a space, I always try to purposely leave some space unused. Because here's the truth about stuff. There is always stuff coming into your home. No matter how you wanna arrange your life, there is always gonna be stuff coming in. And in general, there's typically more stuff coming in than going out, and this is why like I said at the beginning, organization needs to be something you're constantly maintaining. You can't just expect that it's you do it once and then it's done. So while you can do your best to control the flow, I always like to leave some spaces open for anything new that might come in so that I'm not immediately overwhelmed the second something new comes into my space. Just because you have space doesn't mean you need to fill it. I always find like my goal when I'm organizing space is to always have a little bit of extra room, basically for that new stuff that's gonna come in. As you're organizing, whenever you declutter, always think about like, do I need to fill this space to the brim? As opposed to just like filling the entire space because you have the space. All right, and my last routine is consider decanting. I feel like I've talked about decanting a lot, but I really do think that it makes a big difference. It's more beneficial in certain areas than in others, but there are certain things that when you remove them from the packaging, when you decant them, that's what I mean by decanting, like removing something from the packaging it came in and putting it into something, a bin, an organizing tote, whatever, it becomes so much more effective for a couple of reasons. I feel like sometimes we look at decanting, we're just like, oh, that's just to look pretty. And it does look prettier, but it's actually so much more effective. Typically, when we buy a lot of products, the packaging that they come in is designed for like shipping that product, for shipping that product and getting it to your door. But it's not designed for storing that product. And usually we will store things in the boxes they come in because it just seems to make sense. But we have to remember that's not really what they're designed for. And so that's why it kind of like falls flat. But if you decant things, you take snacks, out of the boxes and put them into divided bins. Or you take all your dishwasher pods like out of the bag they come in and throw them into like a acrylic drawer instead. It becomes a lot more efficient use of space because you don't end up with an entire box and maybe now there's only one snack left in there. Two, those boxes, they come in always like break down or they're falling and they're really hard to organize and stack. And three, it makes it a lot easier for you now to see when you are getting low. And so it just makes it a lot easier to rebuy, to know when you need to restock these items. I find any areas that I decant just generally are a lot easier to keep organized. I still have to maintain these spaces, but they just stay organized a lot easier. All right, my friends, that does it. Some of my favorite little routines and mindset shifts that I feel like make decluttering easier and faster, just little things that you can do that make it feel a lot less overwhelming, if you will. Like I said, I'm gonna link a couple other videos that would be really good to watch after that. If you're still looking for a little bit of help, like getting through the clutter. But as always, thank you so much for stopping by and watching, and I hope you're having a fantastic day. Remember to be kind to yourself and others, and I will see you all in my next video.